Hi, everybody. This is Professor Gail Moore. I know that you have had some questions. I've gotten some questions on inventory. So I wanted to talk to you a little about this is one of the problems that you have for homework, but just generally how this works. So the first thing you have to look at is this. What we have going on here is our inventory that we have bought and sold. So if you look at this, here's our beginning inventory. And then we have a sale, purchase, sale, purchase. Okay. So these are all the units that we have. These are the units that we sold. So what we're going to try to figure out is what was the cost of what we sold and then what's the cost of what we have left. And there's four different ways that you can do it. And that's what this problem asks you to do. It asks you to look at its specific identification, weighted average, FIFO, remember FIFO is first in, first out, and LIFO, LIFO is last in, first out. We're going to start with FIFO because it's the easiest. So remember again, we talked about we had beginning inventory, sale, purchase, sale, purchase. Keep that in mind. So we go down here. And this is your running inventory balance over here. This is your cost of goods sold, what you sold, and these are your purchases. Okay, so we're going to combine purchases and sales over here for your running inventory balance. This is just how your book kind of sets it up. So right here, January 1st, we have beginning inventory, 175 units at $10 a unit. Okay, then what happens? Then we sell 135 units. Well, this is first in, first out which means you have to look at the most first in. Well, the only place they can come out of right here is beginning inventory. That's all you own. So we have to cost those out at $10 a unit, which comes from here. And what do we have left? 40, we had a 175, we sold 135 of them. So we have what left? 40 at $10 a unit. Now, then what happens? Then we purchase some more. We purchase 130 at $9 a unit. So now what do we own? We own that 40 at $10 a unit and 130 at $9 a unit. Then what happens? Then we sell 140. Remember, we're first in, first out with this. So what's the first in things that came in? We're going to go back to the top. Well, we still have 40 from that beginning inventory, right? So those are the first 40 that we sell. We don't own any more of those. Then your next 100 has to come out of this 130 because that's all you own. So we sold 100, so we sold 40 at $10 a unit, 100 at $9 a unit, and what do we still own? 30 at $9 a unit. Then we buy 250 more and at $8.50 a unit. So what do we have for our ending inventory? Our ending inventory is 30 at $9 a unit and 250 at $8.50 a unit, okay? So what do we have? We have our cost of goods sold, here, which is $2,650, and our ending inventory, which is $2,395. What we sold, this plus this, what we have left, this and this, okay? That is FIFO. Take a look at that. And then we also have LIFO, LIFO. That's last in, first out, okay? LIFO, same numbers, same units, same stuff. But now we're going to talk, I'll see right here, same information. But now we're going to look at LIFO. You'll hear my dogs underneath the table here. LIFO. So LIFO is last in, first out. Again, we buy these 175, or we have 175 in beginning inventory. Then we sell 135. It has to come out of that beginning inventory. That's still all you own. So our first sale is this, and then we've got 40 left over. Then we buy 130 more at nine. That's the same thing. Then we sell 140 more. Well, so we're now we're doing LIFO, last in, first out. So what's your last in, your most recent in to this sale? It's this 130. So we're going to sell that 131st. This should be on the top, actually. We're selling that 131st. No, but that's not enough, right? Because we actually sold 140, so we need 10 more. Where do those have to come from? They have to come from this $10 number. So we've got 10 at $10. Okay. 
So what do we have left? We have left 30 at $10. And then we buy 250 more at $8.50. That's the same. So what do we have for ending inventory? We have the 30 at $10 and the 250 at 850. So then our cost of goods sold on this is this plus this is 26.20. And our ending inventory is 30 at 10 and 250 at 850, which is 24.25. They're different. Right, and it should be. You're going to get different numbers doing FIFO, LIFO, specific identification, and weighted average. All right, let's go look at weighted average. Weighted average is exactly what it sounds like. It's an average, and it's a weighted average per sale. You have to do it for every sale. Okay, so remember, we're going to start out with the same thing here on January 1st. Our beginning inventory is 175 at 10. That's the same. Then on January 10th, we sold 135 units. Well, it has to still come out of that beginning inventory because again, we're still there. That's all you own. Okay, and what do we have left? 40 at 10. Then we buy 130 at nine. And then we have to do a weighted average of that. So what are you gonna do? You're gonna do 40 times 10 is 400 plus 130 times nine is 1170. Add those together. Divide by the 170, which is this plus this, and that's $9.24. That is your weighted average cost per unit, okay? So when you sell 140 here, you use that weighted average cost per unit. 140 times 9.24 is 12.93. That is what you're going to do for your cost. What do we have left? 130. It retains its $9.24, okay? And then you have another sale that we have here 250 and so we're going to do our ending inventory is the 30 at nine dollars and 24 cents now plus the 250 at 850 and that's your ending inventory you can take a weighted average cost a unit for that if you want to which is 30 times 9.24 plus 250 times 850 divided by the 280 here okay weighted average cost per unit you have to do it for every sale and then we have Specific identification, which is exactly what it sounds like. We do this for things like cars or big items. You know exactly what you sold, not cans of corn, where you don't know exactly which can you sold off the shelf. And if you look here, this has to give you the information right here. It says, for specific identification, ending inventory consists of 280 units, where 250 are from the January 30 purchase. Um, I'm going to have to roll over here. Five are from the January 20th purchase and five from beginning inventory. So you know exactly what your ending inventory is. If you know what your ending inventory is, then you know what you sold, right? If you know what you own, then you know what you sold. So if you roll down here, you can look and see our beginning inventory, okay? Our purchase and purchase, we know this. We know that we start with beginning inventory. We know we had purchase and we know we had a purchase. We know that our ending inventory, they told us what it is. 25 from here, five from here, and 250 from here. Well, if we have 175, we start with 175, and we have 25, we had to have sold 50. If we started with 130 and we ended with five, we had to sell 125. If we started with 250 and ended with 250, we didn't sell any. Okay, and then you just do the math. 150 times 10 is 1,500. 125 times nine, 1,125, add these together. That's your cost of goods sold. Multiply this out, add those together. That's your ending inventory. This is not debits and credits. This is not difficult. This is just math. So you just need to go through and make sure that you get all the math done on this. Then here's some check figures if you need them. So please let me know if you have any questions and I uh, will talk to you again soon. Thanks.